Hello, it's Dana with NVIDIA's Deep Learning Institute. I'm going to share with you the classification project that's part of the free DLI course, Getting Started with AI on Jetson Nano. Let's get started. My Jetson Nano is connected to my laptop through the micro USB to USB port. And I've started my container and my webcam is working. So now I'm going to work through the classification thumbs up, thumbs down project. The idea is to train a deep neural network to recognize whether I'm holding my thumb up or down in front of the camera. I'll focus on the Jupyter Lab view from here on out so you can see everything that's going on. For the classification project, we need to open up the classification folder and launch the classification notebook. The first thing we're going to do is start the video camera. As you can see, I got an error, and the reason I got an error is because I have the camera already uh, controlled by another notebook, so I need to shut that down because the camera can only be controlled by one notebook at a time, and we can rerun this cell and the camera is created. That's how we know that the camera is working properly. In this next cell, we're going to decide what kind of project we're going to do. We're calling the task thumbs, and the categories are thumbs up or thumbs down. We're going to take pictures of examples of thumbs up and thumbs down, and then we're going to train a network to classify new pictures as thumbs up or thumbs down. Later on, you can try different projects. You can do a four class system with your face with different emotions, or you can hold your fingers up one, two, three, four, five, or something else completely that you come up with. The more classes there are, the more examples we're going to need, and the more possibility of confusion by the network as to what the answer is. So we're gonna start with the simple binary thumbs up or thumbs down. Okay, let's go ahead and execute this one. Okay, the task was created. And the data directory, we're going to go ahead and create a data directory. And you see a directory opened up. Okay, it's time to, for the data collection. We're going to create a data collection tool widget. We're doing it so that we can easily collect the data. Okay, now we're getting to the model itself. This is where PyTorch comes in. PyTorch is a model framework for deep learning. There are a few different models that we could use, and these are provided for you to uncomment if you choose to change them. And what we're gonna do is set up a model with ResNet 18. We're gonna use a pre-trained model that's already been trained for images, but we're going to fine tune it with our own images. Let's go ahead and execute this. Now there's another widget, the live execution widget, and this will allow us to see in real time how our model is analyzing images that are coming through in the camera. Go ahead and execute this. The widget is created. And now we're going to set up the training and evaluation. This won't run right now. We're just setting it up so that we can run it when we push a button later on. So this is an image showing you how the data collection is going to work. We're going to have different parts to our tool. We're going to have a live camera, and then we're going to have a place where we're collecting the data. We'll just do a click, click, click to add as we show our thumb up or down in front of the camera, and then we'll determine how long we want to train it. An epoch is one entire training cycle through all of the data that we've collected and we'll be able to train it and look at the loss and the accuracy that were found during the training. We want high accuracy and low loss. Then if we want to save the model, we can. Over here is the test. So once the model is actually created, as we hold our thumb up or down here in this image, we'll see what the prediction is, what kind of percentage the model has determined. Okay, one last thing to do, we're going to create the final large widget. And there it is. What I want to do is collect some pictures. All I have to do is add. So I'm going to add, add, that adds one. 
and I'm going to vary the location of my thumb. Always thumbs up, but I want to give lots of examples. And we want the examples to be quite different. Far away pictures, angled, different parts of the image. Okay, that's 33. That means I need to get 33 for the thumbs down. And I'll do the same thing. 33. Okay, now the first epoch will take a little longer, but I'm going to go ahead and set it at 10 and start running. Click Train. As the network trains, we can see that the accuracy is increasing. It took it a little while to get started with that first epoch, but once it's going, it, it moves along a little faster. We see the accuracy changing as it works through all the examples. Sometimes it even says the accuracy is 100%, but that really just means that it's 100% right on, on the examples that it has. We might give it some other example that it would be wrong on. Okay, if we want to watch it live, we can hold the thumb up and see what it thinks is going on. Up oh, says thumbs down, thumbs up. So it's got that right. What if I hold it way out here? Does it still know? Can it still tell the difference? Looks like it missed one. I must not have trained that very well. Over here it got it, here it didn't. So maybe I need to collect some more data here. In fact, I'll do that. I'll collect one here, because it got it wrong there. Collect one here. Okay. Let's give it another couple, another few epochs, about five more. Okay, let's see how it's doing now. Thumbs up, pretty good. About thumbs down. Oh, it's right. I think before we had trouble in some of these areas with the thumbs down, and now it's learned those. Very good. So it's working pretty good. Let's take a quick look at the data and see how this was stored. As it collected it, it called it thumbs A. Remember there was a data set A or B. We have A set here. If we wanted to collect more data, we would collect it in another folder named thumbs B, for example. So under thumbs A, we have the two labels are also the names of the folders, thumbs down and thumbs up. And that's the way these image classification type of models work is the folder is the label. And that's something to remember when you when we look later at the regression project that has a different kind of annotation. So under the thumbs down, we have all these pictures that are pictures of the thumbs down that I took. And if you actually took one wrong, I could go in there and just delete it if I could figure out exactly which one it was. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Suppose I move the camera to have a different background, in this case, my window. How is the thumbs up, a thumbs down going to perform? Suddenly, it's not doing so well. And why do we think that is? Well, it could be that it learned that a certain background color or a certain a certain edge that happened to be where my thumb was at the time is how it knows whether it's thumbs up or thumbs down. So we're going to have to add some more training. Let's try that. Another five epochs. And train. Okay, let's look at the live. Ah, much better. Much better. Oh, thumbs down is pretty good. Maybe there's a few little things. Well, this data that we have sitting here is going to persist out on the Nano. So even if we close down this container right now in order to go do something for something else and then come back to the next project, we can. If you want to start a new project, you can do the kernel, restart kernel and clear all outputs. What this will do is, is take the camera offline again, release it, and you can start over. So if we wanted to do something a little different, 
we could start again and I'll just show you how you would change this. We won't go through the emotions project because it would look very funny, but if I went to do the emotions project, I would comment out the thumbs project. Same thing with categories. And the rest can stay the same. I hope you enjoyed the first classification project. Now you can continue to experiment with the alternate classification projects in the course and with your own image ideas to learn more about how the network learns from the data you give it. When you're ready for a new twist on this idea, give the regression project a try. To learn more, visit nvidia.com dli or email us at nvdli at nvidia.com.